In this video, I survived 100 days on Hardcore Minecraft. I'm sure everybody here knows what Hardcore Minecraft is, but basically, if you die, you die. There are no respawns, your entire world gets deleted, which means so does all your hard work and all your happiness. This is my first Hardcore world and I actually got a lot of stuff done. This is the hardest difficulty on Minecraft, and with all that being said, this is my 100 days on Hardcore Minecraft. And just one quick favor, please subscribe and like this video. I started off day one with, you guessed it, fisting some wood. We're all familiar with wood and especially us guys. So I just decided to fast forward this entire part just to save you some time, but I did make an axe to speed up the process and I mined a whole bunch of wood. I then went exploring and I knew I would get hungry, so I saw some cows and I just murdered all the animals I saw. And when I mean all the animals, I literally mean every single animal. After killing the entire animal kingdom, I saw some mushrooms and for some reason I decided to get some to make mushroom stew even though it just killed all the animals in this world. I then upgraded all my tools to stone and then I found this big ravine which I made my safe way down and I mined a whole bunch of iron. Once I mined enough iron, I made my safe way up and for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to fight this creeper. It left me at one heart and I was super scared that a skeleton would shoot me with an arrow. Luckily they didn't and I just killed all these sheep. I then climbed Mount Everest hoping there wasn't any mobs up there. I made a bed and went right to sleep. On day 2, I decided to go mining early because I don't really like mining so I made myself a shield, some iron tools, some iron armor and I went mining. I then found this abandoned mine shaft which led me to a pretty big ravine and actually found a lot of diamonds in this ravine. I usually don't find diamonds in ravines, but today was my lucky day. I then walked like 10 blocks to this lava pit and I found diamonds right in front of me. Luckily, I mined those two blocks of stone or I wouldn't have found it. And I swear it wasn't x-raying, but I guess that's something an x-ray would say. Here's a quick montage of all the diamonds I mined. This took like two hours. I finally made my way out and I spotted a village right beside me. So day seven to 11, I went exploring. I didn't find anything good in the village, but I did find two emeralds. I also stole all their carrots and potatoes. So I guess it was worth it. As I ran around looking for a place to call home, I found this cool little mob spawner in the side of a mountain. I was thinking of setting up my home there, but I knew I would find something better. I then went to bed facing the sunset. What a beautiful block game. Once I woke up on day 12, I was pretty determined to find myself a new home. I've been living on the streets for way too long. I then ran into a biome with a whole bunch of flowers. I have no idea what the biome is called, but I built up to take a good look from above and I really like this place. I also found this cool little mountain area with like a whole bunch of floating islands and it seemed pretty cool, but I liked my flower biome a little bit more. Now, how manly is that? I then made my way up to where I wanted to build my house. I set down my crafting table. I claimed my territory. I cleared out the entire area, got my trusty shovel and I started terraforming the mountains. And this is what it looked like when it was all complete. On day 13 to 14, I continued making my house. I made some windows. I then went to grab some sand so I could make some glass. I mined a whole bunch of spruce wood for my floor and I kept working on my house. With the sun setting, I quickly finished the floor because I didn't want to stay the night. Once I finished the floor, I plopped my bed down in front of the sunset and I went to bed again. On day 15, I did the same exact thing. I made my house, how exciting. I made my ceiling out of spruce wood and I just ran out of blocks so I had to place a full block. I checked inside and it looked pretty ugly because I was using slabs, but then I put these full blocks beside it and it looked like there were support pillars or something, so I thought it was pretty cool. After 15 days of being homeless, I finally moved in and had a place to stay. The next day, I found a cow roaming outside my house, so I made some fences and I decided to put him in captivity. From now on, he is my dedicated meat producer. The industrial revolution is coming. Soon enough, I'm going to own the biggest burger business on Minecraft, even though I'm the only one living on this world. I then spent the rest of my day adding some little details to my house and making it look a little bit more pretty. After all that boring building stuff is out the way, I dedicated day 17 to 25 looking for a village to borrow some bookshelves. I also collected a whole bunch of sugarcane I found just to make some paper if I wasn't lucky enough to find a village. One jump cut later, I did find a village, but there wasn't any bookshelves. Right before I went to bed, I found another village right where the sun was setting. Unfortunately, they literally had nothing. It was a pretty big village, but they had zero bookshelves. You know when you just find a village, you get really excited? Well, I've been getting scammed. All the villages I find literally have nothing. So for a desperate attempt for bookshelves, I decided to kill some horses and cows for their leather. Hopefully no vegans are watching. If you are vegan, please close your eyes, but it's probably too late for that. And I totally regret killing this donkey because the noise it made when it died really hit me in the heart. 
I then found my first nether portal ruin, stole its gold blocks, and I actually found a super golden apple. I think that's what it's called. The next day, I lured another cow into my burger factory. Then the two cows made love. After that, I dedicated the next two days working on my farm, and this actually took a lot longer than I expected because I kept running under resources and I had to clear all the trees and terraform the land. After this insane transition, I used day 29 to 34 to build my bridge because I was so sick of jumping into the water every time I wanted to go to my farm. I'm sorry for all the boring building, but I decided to speed this process up for you guys. After the bridge, I made a staircase up to my house and this took a really long time too because I really suck at building. And I also made a second bridge that I didn't show you guys, but you'll see later on in the video. And try not to roast me like a grilled chicken for my uh, crappy building. It took me like three hours to do all this. So hopefully you guys think it looks good too because I kind of like it. On day 35, I wanted to make a full level 30 enchantment table. It's kind of sad that I'm making it now because I've had diamonds since like the second day and now I'm making the enchantment table for some reason. So I'm pretty late on that, but at least the uh, enchantment table area looks pretty nice. The next couple of days, I dedicated this time to get an enchantment table. For some reason, I could not find any lava pits underground, so I had to take individual lavas to get the four obsidian. And this entire process really pissed me off because it took way longer than it should have. It took me two full days to of just find lava i probably could have just dug straight down and found enough lava but for some reason i just explored i finally made my way out of the cave and i started getting ganged by like 14 skeletons and i was actually getting kind of scared but i didn't realize i had like nine and a half hearts i then got my last piece of obsidian it took way too long to get that and the sun was rising so now it is day 39 i made my enchantment table and plopped it down I got some lapis and I got my first enchantment on my diamond pickaxe and I luckily got on breaking three efficiency four. Then I took a good look at my cow prison and I felt really bad for them. So I decided to spend the next couple of days working on their new prison. I gathered some resources. I changed up the blocks. I increased the size and hopefully the cows feel better being my uh, meat producers. This way they will produce better meat and it will taste much better for my customers. I then broke down their walls and let them free only to be stuck in a bigger jail. And there we go. Their prison looks a lot better now, and now I can start my mass production of burgers. I then spent the next day playing with some enchantments to see what I can get, and I ended up getting a silk touch book from a level 30 enchantment. I also spent day 43 to 45 making a little mineshaft area, and I'm planning to make a bridge connecting it together, but I didn't record it. On day 46, I spent the time making a staircase all the way down to my shirt mine, and I spent some time mining for diamonds. With enough levels, I decided to make another diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I enchanted it and got efficiency 4 on breaking 3 again, which is awesome, and I went mining once again. My shirt mine then led to a little cave, and I found a mob spawner here, and it was a zombie spawner. So I grabbed a whole bunch of blocks so I can make a grinder, and that's what I did on day 48 to 51. I had them float above ground so I can have like a nice view of them going across this little glass area. I thought it looked pretty cool. I then mined a giant opening to my mob grinder and a big staircase. And once it was all finished and they were spawning, I spent the entire day 52 just grinding XP so I can enchant some tools. I then combined my pickaxe with my silk touch book and I named it the monkey maker 3.0 for some reason. I'm not sure what happened to version one and two, but that's what I called it. And I spent the rest of day 53 doing the same thing and grinding for XP. Moss spawner is a lot slower than I thought. I thought it would be a lot faster, but it takes me a long time to get XP. I then spent the next two days just enchanting stuff and making some diamond armor for the first time. I got a nice protection for unbreaking three chest plate and pants, which are really nice. Grinded a bit more, got some boots, protection for unbreaking three again, which is amazing. And I wanted to head to the nether, so I made myself a gold helmet and I enchanted it and also got protection for unbreaking three. Now that I'm all suited up to go to the nether, I went to go grab some obsidian to make my nether portal, which is what I did on day 56. I grabbed what I needed like gold to trade it with those piglins. I started enchanting my bow on day 56 to 58, which took a really long time because I had to enchant like 15 different bows to get the bow I really wanted with, with infinity, power 4, punch, and all that stuff. I then crafted my nether portal in the middle of the water just so there's some space for me to design it later. Now that I'm all suited up, I have my bow, my two pickaxes to get some netherite. That is my goal. I have some gold ingots to trade for some ender pearls, a super golden apple, some water buckets and a cauldron. And the golden apple is just like my plan B if I'm just about to die. That's like my last resort. Hopefully I can find another fortress and get some blaze rods, but who knows how lucky I get. Once I spawned in, I started panicking a little bit. I didn't want to die to those pig looking things with the horns and stuff because 
because those things really scared me and I don't like them at all. So I built right up and covered my nether portal just so I don't die if I spawn in. And speaking about lucky, right where my nether portal spawned, there is a fortress right beside me. How lucky is that? And guess what? Like 10 blocks ahead, there was a blaze spawner right there. I got so lucky. So day 60 to 62, I spent killing blazes and collecting some blaze rods so I can make some eye of ender. So I can head to the end and kill the ender dragon later in the video and hopefully get an elytra. I was pretty scared killing these blazes because I really didn't want to catch fire. It's because I played Fundy's Nightmare Challenge. When you catch on fire, you lose health so fast. So I'm so used to that, but you don't lose health that fast in vanilla. After a really long time killing blazes, I finally got enough blazes to leave and go find some piglins to trade with so I can get some ender pearls. And once I left, I found another blaze spawner close by. This would be an amazing place to start a grinder, so I might do that in another episode. And then I started throwing some gold at some piglins, and I have a lot of experience with that in real life. Just throwing money out to people, I'm not gonna say where. And I just witnessed a baby piglin steal my gold and run away. I then mined this glowstone looking thing, I have no idea what it's called, but it looks pretty cool. Then I started trading with some more piglins to try to get some more ender pearls. I trapped them in a hole so I can just throw gold at them like it's a... You, you know you know what i'm talking about you know the places with the poles and like the businessmen that are like a really popular place to go to at night where you just have business meetings and they're just like long poles everywhere and they're just money being thrown around like it's a stock market you know what i'm talking you know or maybe i'm just the only one never mind after throwing a stack and a half of gold and getting nothing in return just like in real life i decided to go mine for some netherite for the first time ever but then I hit a really big dry spot and this entire area is what I mined with zero netherite found. That was like an hour of mining. I finally broke my dry spell and found some more netherite and I found some more right after and I think I ended off with around 16 netherite which was around like two and a half hours of mining so I decided to go back home. Oh it was so nice seeing the daylight again. I don't see red everywhere and devil I just see beautiful skies and a lot of flowers. This is what I got for mining. I got a whole bunch of blackstone, a whole bunch of nether quartz, some netherite and some random stuff from trading. I actually got seven ender pearls from trading which isn't too bad I think. After two hours of mining I completely destroyed both my pickaxes so on day 71 I enchanted another pickaxe and luckily I got efficiency 4 on breaking 3 once again. I then started to smelt my netherite that I mined in the nether. I got netherite scraps and I combined it with some gold ingots to make the netherite ingots. I made my smithing table to combine my armor with the netherite and then the first thing I combined was my diamond pickaxe with netherite and I made myself a netherite pickaxe, my first one ever. I was pretty excited about this. I then made netherite leggings. For some reason, I chose pants out of everything else. And then I actually started looking like a pro Minecraft gamer. I also made a netherite chest plate, so I'm fully decked out in netherite armor. And soon I'll be ready to fight the ender dragon. Then I gave all of my cows a really good time until I slaughter them all and eat them. On day 72 to 75, I went mining and used my silk touch pickaxe. And I'm running out of diamonds because the last time I mined was all the way back on day two. As I was mining, I found these three skeletons that were beefing with each other. After one skeleton died, one of the skeletons shot the other in the back of the head. And then I had to assert my dominance and kill them. Yeah, sorry bro. I'm the king here. In the same exact cave where the skeletons were beefing, I found some diamonds. And then I found this ravine and then I saw this little slime just jumping around. I'm not sure where his parents are, but I decided to kill him for his slime balls. And obviously it dropped two. My goal was also to find a horse and I brought a saddle with me. So I found these patches of horses after mining and I finally tamed one. I put the saddle on him and the armor and he was decently fast, but not the fastest horse I've ever had. And then like a couple seconds later, I jumped and my God, this guy touched the moon. I was so shocked on how high he could jump for my first horse I ever found. As you can see, I was pretty in shock. I just stood in one spot and kept jumping. So I had to do a test. I put some blocks down. I made it four blocks high. I grabbed my horse and I tried jumping to see how high he could jump. And my God, he could really jump four blocks. His skin color does not lie. I really like this horse and I got really overconfident so I started jumping over mobs and anything that came my way. I then jumped over a creeper and I was just overconfident and I loved my guy. So I first thought of the name Michael and the last name Jordan but I didn't think that suited him enough so I decided to change his name to Oswald and I think that's a better name for my horse. Luckily I got the balls of that slime I found when I was mining and I made a lead. I then tied him up right beside my house and he just seems so happy that his name is Oswald and that I'm his owner now so lucky him. 
I then started to enchant some iron pickaxes because I really wanted to get fortune 3. I didn't have any diamonds left and all the diamonds I did get mining they were in diamond ore and I didn't want to mine them with a normal pickaxe so I tried getting fortune on a iron pickaxe. And then this happened. Of course a creeper just had to sneak up on me. Don't we all just hate creepers man they are always so sneaky with their two little legs or whatever ugly looking legs they have. But anyways, I was too lazy to use my grinder because it was kind of slow. So I decided to try to get some XP by mining some nether quartz and smelting stuff. My zombie grinder was a little slower than I expected. So I have to sit there and wait for like 20, 30 minutes just to get level 30. So it takes me a while. So I just decided to do this because I had a whole bunch of ore laying around that I didn't use. I then put my iron pickaxe in the enchantment table and I got fortune 3. Let's go. I was so excited. It took me so long to get this and I finally got it. So I then put all my diamond ores down and I used my fortune 3. After that, I decided to go on another big mining spree, so I spent the next three days just straight up mining for diamonds. All I was looking for was diamonds. I was like the kid that got a new toy and I just bring it everywhere I go and I just really want to use that toy. That was me with my Fortune 3 Iron Pickaxe on day 77. And yes, I know I'm pretty slow at everything, but I decided to take my time on this world because I don't usually play survival. I then finished mining and came back with 49 diamonds. On day 81, I decided to do a little bit of work all around my base, so I just harvested all my wheat and then harvested all my potatoes even though i don't really use potatoes i harvested all my carrots and then this random piece of bacon kept following me around so i decided to feed them i forcefully made all my cows make love and reproduce and i finally started lighting up my area and all the islands surrounding me on day 81 i was lighting up places around me so no mob spawn i am so late to everything while i was lighting up the area i found these two endermen and then i politely stole their pearls i only got one but that's all right whatever amount of ender pearls will help me get to the end so i'm planning to kill the ender dragon very very soon and this is what my area looks like all lit up it looks very beautiful i'm planning to set up a whole bunch of random stuff on these islands so each island serves a different function like one island will be villagers one will be like breeding or something but that'll be another video so let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a day 200 and i'll do one for you guys on day 82 i decided to revamp my nether portal so i made this very cool area and i built a custom nether portal i also went to grab some lava to add to the cool effect of my nether portal make it look super nethery kind of <laughs> hopefully the building Thing doesn't bore you guys too much this is what it looks like i think it looks really good it definitely looks way better than a regular nether portal just sitting in the corner of your base on day 84 i decided to grab some villagers luckily i had a village pretty close to me it was right across the water so i went to grab one with my boat we illegally crossed the border and i threw them into this glass containment center only for research purposes you know like not to sexually abuse them this is solely for research 100 i then grabbed another villager and this guy tried escaping my prison i mean my abuse i mean my uh research department yeah this is my research center but this guy this guy was smart he knew what was up so he tried escaping but but with some kind words i politely talked him right back into the cell i definitely did not punch him if there were no cameras and no footage of it there's no proof and then he manages to escape again i didn't even realize <laughs> So I had to chase him down and I grabbed him into my police car and I drove him right back into the cell. Get back in there. Yeah, all of these guys trying to escape. While I was clearing the area, I heard some footsteps and I was like, oh no. And both of them escaped. I have no idea how. So I had to chase him down again. I had to call in some backup, but I finally got him in. And this time they were not going anywhere. I had the place locked down. And then day 85, guess what happened? Both of them turned into zombie villagers. I have no idea how. I didn't see another zombie nearby to infect them, but it just happened. And I wasn't mad about it because I didn't like these two villagers. So I went back to the village and grabbed two more villagers. And I made the entire breeding area off camera. I didn't want to bore you guys. But then to finish off day 85, I decided to revamp my chest area. I added more chests and I organized everything because I was a mess earlier the next day on day 86 i was feeling pretty good in the morning so i decided to go crowd surfing on top of all my cows and wow i had way too many cows man i then quickly checked up on my villagers and they were making love pretty brave of them to make love right in front of me but they weren't breeding at all so i decided to trade a little bit with the farmer to see if it would convince him to breed with the other guy maybe the other guy was too ugly or something or i have no idea that's their problem and on day 87 i decided to build a bridge to connect my main island to the mob grinder island the bridge looks pretty sick in my eyes i'm not the best builder so don't judge me but i think it looks pretty good and then there's this area <laughs> let's just forget about that day 88 this was dedicated to practicing my aim i had to kill the ender dragon soon and i didn't have much experience with the bow so i needed target practice and what better way to shoot an arrow in a big crowd of cows this way i will never miss and i took it a little too far by shooting it literally across the country look how far i was my arrow just went right out of render distance 
I couldn't see if I hit any cows, but let's just say I did. I then just went back and killed all the adult cows. That is not cruel at all. When I was practicing aiming with my bow on those cows, I unfortunately had to witness this tragedy. Yep, you guys all witnessed it here first. A bunny just jumped off a cliff a little too high, snapped his ankles, broke his legs, and just disappeared and died. How tragic. I decided to make an item frame and put his remains in the item frame and made a little sign. Rest in peace, the bunny I met for literally two and a half milliseconds. But I had to move on with my day. On day 89, I decided to enchant some boots and some helmets. I was planning to fight the ender dragon soon, so I had to get prepared. As I was enchanting my, my own business, I got attacked by two phantoms. This was my first time ever encountering phantoms and it scared the poop out of me. I then killed them with my trusty bow and one of them dropped their membrane, which was a, a very polite gift. But this came in handy to make some slow falling potions for the ender dragon. After fighting the phantoms, I got pretty hungry and grabbed the nearest food source I could find. Let me tell you, this was pretty good. I'm not sure what I ate, but it was pretty tasty. And day 90 was my preparation day. I tried to get Feather Fallen 4, I got myself a nether right helmet, I made my eyes of ender, and I really wanted to make some slow falling potions just to save me, so I went to the nether to grab some nether warts really quickly. And then this wither skeleton sneaked up on me. I killed it and guess what it dropped that's right he dropped his head I decapitated him I'm pretty sure that was my first or second wither skeleton I killed in this world so I got pretty lucky I then killed two other ones hoping I'll get just as lucky but I didn't I then started to brew my slow falling potions and I was all set up at my netherite armor my sword pickaxe I brought my trusty bow some golden apples I even brought a super golden apple and I hopped on Oswald and I made my journey to the end and I was ready to kill the ender dragon I then made it up to the top of the mountain and threw another one and it led me in the same direction once nightfall came, I was having a lot of fun shooting all these mobs with my arrows, and then another tragedy happened. I unfortunately aimed a little too low and shot Oswald right in the back of the head. This was the saddest moment of my life. I made him a little grave, I set my prayers, and I went on about my journey to kill the Ender Dragon without Oswald. About a thousand blocks later, I shot my Eye of Ender and it went straight down. So I mined straight down and I found the first signs of the stronghold. I went inside and it took me literally 35 minutes to find this thing. It was a huge stronghold and I could not find it to save my life. I then found this chest and it had a saddle in it, which unfortunately reminded me of the death of Oswald. On day 93, I finally found the end portal and I got so lucky. There were only six empty end portals and I only had six eyes of ender. I got so lucky. I lit up the portal and the time has come, guys. It's time to kill the ender dragon. Took the leap of faith in honor of Oswald. I spawned floating in the middle of nowhere, so I quickly panicked and started bridging to the main island so I don't get knocked off. It's always the scariest moments figuring out where you're gonna spawn because sometimes you would just spawn in the middle of nowhere like what happened to me i loaded up my boat took my first shot and bang i hit it right on the spot took my second shot and bang i literally don't miss took my third i hit it took my fourth i hit it and then i whiffed on my fifth i dragged my slow falling potion so i can pillar up to ones i can reach i then shot the remaining crystals that i could hit there goes one there goes two and then there goes the third and this was a pillar that was way too high for me to hit. I didn't want to waste any time, so I started pillaring up. The dragon then flew by really close to me, and I was so afraid he's going to hit me off. Luckily, I had slow falling. I then took out the two remaining crystals, and I was left with the very last one. The dragon shot his stanky-ass breath at me. Good thing I brought nose plug, so I built up. He shot another one, and he just missed me. And then I took out the last crystal. With all the crystals down in record time, I could focus on killing the ender dragon. I took the leap and I started to light the dragon up with my arrows. I literally could not miss. I then swung my sword into his butt a couple times and I started to light his ass up one more time. And at this point, I literally could not miss. I was so locked in. This man had no idea what to do. He was just flying in circles. He had nowhere to go because my arrows would just find him. No matter where he was and no matter how far he was, I literally could not miss. Look how- oh my god. And then he flew right by me and I missed the closest shot possible. And then he came down to give me the throne. I swung my sword a couple times and I slayed the ender dragon. Let's go, it only took 93 days. And then I tried getting his egg to claim his child. I right clicked it and it fell right into the portal. Yep, that is gone for good. I have no idea where it went. I searched around, I thought it would be like around, but it wasn't. I then built up to the little end city portal thing. I have no idea what it's called and shaman and a pearl inside and i'm in the new end world 
I've only been here a couple of times, so it's still pretty new to me. I killed some endermen for some ender pearls so I can go across the islands. And then I found my first little city or house or whatever it's called. I then fought these shulkers. It took me a while to figure out why they were teleporting. As you can see, I was so confused where he went. I was then having an intense battle in like this column with a whole bunch of shulkers. I was kind of panicking because there's so many things shooting at you and so many noises. And I didn't know they deflect arrows. So I was just shooting arrows at myself and catching myself on fire. I had no idea what was going on. There were just so many things happening at once. It was pretty funny rewatching this and watching me panic. I then got the hang of it and started killing a whole bunch of shulkers. Found this chest with a decent sword and I killed some more shulkers. This was my second city I found and I turned left and guess what? I found another one. And keep in mind, this is like an hour of footage. As you know, it takes you forever to find these cities. Through Ender Pearl and I got way too close to the edge than I liked. I then killed more shulkers like usual. Literally an hour later, I finally found the city I was looking for. Cleared out the entire city and then built up to the ship, broke the blocks, killed the shulker protecting the elytra and there it was. The wings. It took me literally two hours of just straight running to find these i grabbed it and i was so happy to have these oh my god it's gonna make traveling so much easier and then i went to the front of the ship and stole the dragon head and i finally got the elytra and dragon head on day 98 to 99 i then put the dragon head on and i thought i looked pretty sick and right behind me i noticed something I turned around and guess what I saw? I saw one of those portals to bring me back home. I was so happy. I'm so happy I didn't have to run like a thousand more blocks to find one. And there it is, the iconic credits that nobody reads. Sorry, not sorry, Mojang. I actually didn't use any of my god apples and I killed the ender dragon in less than four minutes. Like I still had my slow falling by the time I got into the end city. So I killed the dragon pretty quick. On my very last day of my hardcore world on day 100, I renamed my elytra to cookie wings. I didn't have a better name. So that's the first thing that came to mind. I'm not that creative. I then crafted some rockets and here's my first flight. Hopefully I don't die. And let's go, baby. I feel like Superman. It took me like two hours to find these wings when I could have just bought Red Bull at my local convenience store. But it was all worth it. These 100 days were extremely fun. I spent the rest of the day just flying around and I was super excited. My elytra was actually kind of damaged already and this is what I ended up with to finish off my 100 days. I had netherite armor, a netherite pickaxe. I had my elytra, wither head, a whole bunch of diamonds, a whole bunch of tools I enchanted a lot of enchantment books 33 shulker shells i have no idea how many chests that will make i have the head and i'll continue all my stuff and make my shulker shells and everything on my next day 200 if you guys want to see that so comment that down below if you guys want to see a day 200 but i'm gonna give you guys one last walkthrough through my hardcore world before this video ends here's my farm a couple of my bridges and my walkways across the water my little mine shaft where i do all my stripping i mean my strip mining here's the giant bridge i made this is my nether portal that i spent way too long decorating but i think it looks amazing i love this black stone and the details are added to this just to spice up my world a little bit more and on day 200 my plan is to conquer all these islands beside me i'm planning to make a whole bunch of bridges and like connect them all each island will serve its own function and that is my goal for the next day 200 if you guys want to see that but thank you guys so much for watching this video if you even made it here i appreciate you guys thank you guys so much for watching this entire thing it was a really fun journey way too many hours of footage but i had fun if you guys are new here please subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more of these survival hardcore stuff i've been having a lot of fun i hope you guys enjoyed watching this and let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more turn on post notifications like the video do all that stuff that would mean a lot to me thank you guys so much and yeah hope you guys have a good day stay safe and i'll see you guys on day 200